Hi, and welcome to an introduction on behavioral neuroscience by myself, Stephen Worley. First of all, let's clear things up. Psychobiology is the branch of science that deals with the biological basis of behavior and mental phenomena. Biopsychology is the branch of psychology concerned with its biological and physiological aspects. Behavioral neuroscience is the study of the nervous system and brain and their effects on behavior. So, they're all basically the same. It's like trying to get into a castle by going over, under, or even through it. Is that confusing? Anyways, let's get started. Our main focus today will be on the nervous system and the endocrine system. So let's start with the endocrine system. It's the system of glands that produce endocrine secretions that help to control bodily metabolic activity. Also, it can be pronounced endocrine, endocrine, or even endocrine. The upper third of the endocrine system is made up of the hypothalamus, the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and the thyroid. The hypothalamus secretes hormones such as thyrotropin-releasing hormone, which stimulates thyroid-stimulating hormone release from the anterior pituitary gland. Dopamine, which prevents prolactin release from the interior pituitary gland and creates a sense or feeling of achievement and satisfaction. Oh, and it's also responsible for sexual arousal. <clears throat> growth hormone releasing hormone, which activates growth hormone release from the anterior pituitary gland. Somatostatin, which prevents both growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone release from the anterior pituitary gland. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which activates both follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone release from the anterior pituitary gland. Corticotropin-releasing hormone, which activates adrenocorticotropic hormone release from the anterior pituitary gland. Oxytocin, which increases positive social interactions, wound healing, and is believed to cause the feeling of an orgasm. It is also responsible for stimulating breastfeeding and causing contractions in the second and third stages of labor for women. And lastly, vasopressin, which regulates water retention, permeability, and reabsorption that increases blood volume. The only hormone secreted by the pineal gland is melatonin, which regulates your regular sleeping habits by causing drowsiness and lowering the body's core temperature. Oh, and it has a side job of being an antioxidant. The thyroid gland secretes two hormones, trilodothyronine, which increases the body's metabolic rate and promotes protein synthesis, and thyroxine, which does the same as trilodothyronine and basically acts as a support to it. In the pituitary gland, there is the growth hormone, which, as you guessed, causes growth and cell reproduction. Thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the thyroxine and triodothyronine in the thyroid gland. Adrenocorticotropic hormone activates corticosteroid and androgen synthesis and release. Follicle-stimulating hormone regulates the development, growth, pubertal maturation, and reproductive processes of the body. Luteinizing hormone triggers ovulation in females and stimulates the production of testosterone in men. Prolactin stimulates the mammary glands and causes a feeling of sexual gratification after sexual acts and melanocyte-stimulating hormone causes melanin synthesis and release from hair and skin. The rest of the hormones in the pituitary gland you already know. Elementary, my dear Watson. Now on to the alimentary system, made up of the liver, duodenum, kidney, stomach, pancreas, adrenal glands, and adrenal medulla. Secreted hormones in the liver include insulin-like growth factor, which has insulin-like effects and regulates cell growth and development. Angiotensinogen and angiotensin, which control vein constriction and released aldosterone from the adrenal cortex, and thrombopoietin, which controls the production of platelets. Secretions from the duodenum include secretin, which stops the production of gastric juice, and cholecystokinin, which releases digestive enzymes from the pancreas and releases bile from the gallbladder, and it is also a hunger suppressant. Hormones in the kidney include renin, which helps regulate blood pressure, erythropoietin, which activates red blood cell production, calcitriol, which increases the blood's calcium and phosphate levels, and thrombopoietin. Hormones in the stomach include gastrin, which causes the release of stomach acid, ghrelin, which causes hunger and the secretion of growth hormone, neuropeptide Y, which causes an increase in the amount of food you want to eat, and a decrease in physical activity. 
somatostatin, which helps with the digestive process as a whole, histamine, which stimulates gastric acid secretion, and endothelin, which causes smooth muscle contraction in the stomach. Hormones secreted in the pancreas include insulin, which regulates and lowers sugar levels in the blood, glucagon, which increases sugar levels in the blood, somatostatin, which causes the release of insulin and glucagon, and pancreatic polypeptide, which regulates the pancreas secretion activities and affects the hepatic glycogon levels. Hormones secreted from the adrenal cortex include glucocorticoids, which stop protein synthesis, glucose used by muscles, are immunosuppressives, and are also anti-inflammatory, mineralocorticoids, which increase water retention and blood pressure, and androgens, which don't have much of an effect on men, but tend to make women more masculine. The adrenal medulla secretes hormones such as adrenaline, which increase the heart rate and respiration, dilate the pupils, and suppress the non-emergency bodily processes, such as digestion, noradrenaline, which increases heart rate, blood pressure, and skeletal muscle readiness, dopamine, which increases the heart rate and blood pressure, and enkephalin, which regulates pain. Today we're only going to be talking about the ovaries and testes in the lower third of the endocrine system, because I'm just going to assume that most of the students aren't pregnant who are watching this video. Hormones secreted from the ovaries include progesterone, which prevents lactation and labor, along with other uses including being an anti-inflammatory, androstenedione, which is the enzyme substrate for estrogen, estrogen, which helps women grow physical characteristics that distinguish them from men, accelerate height growth, burn fat, reduce muscle mass, and keep skin, veins, and hair healthy, and inhibin, which stops production of follicle-stimulating hormone in the anterior pituitary gland. Hormones secreted from the testes include androgens, the most popular of which is testosterone, which increase muscle and bone mass, cause men to reach sexual maturity, deepen the voice, and cause growth of body and facial hair, estradiol, which prevents programmed cell death of sperm cells, and inhibin, which stops the production of follicle-stimulating hormone. I'm pretty glad we're done with that. But before we go on to the nervous system, let's have some fun watching a video of a guy getting hit in the head. <laughs> Is that any good or that? Yeah, it's pretty good. Alright, back to science. The nervous system is the network of nerve cells and fibers that transmits nerve impulses between parts of the body. The two parts of the nervous system are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. Let's start with the brain. First, let's ask, how big is it, or how much does it weigh? I think my friend Ron wants to answer that question. I'm a man who discovered the wheel and built the Eiffel Tower out of metal and brawn. That's what kind of man I am. You're just a woman with a small brain, with a brain a third the size of us. It's science. No, Ron, it's not science. You didn't even answer the question. Statistically, men's brains are about 3 pounds, and women's brains are about 2.75 pounds. But the only weight difference is because of average body size, not smartness. But back to the brain. It's divided into three parts, the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. The hindbrain includes the cerebellum, pons, and medulla. The cerebellum helps control posture and balance. The pons is a bridge between the spinal cord and the brain and helps produce chemicals the brain needs to sleep. And the medulla controls the breathing, the heartbeat, and reflexes. The midbrain is basically the communication center of the brain. It conveys messages of stimuli from outer senses to the rest of the brain. And finally, there's the forebrain, which is made up of the thalamus, the hypothalamus, the cerebral cortex, the cerebrum, and the limbic system. The thalamus interprets all sensory input except smells. The hypothalamus controls hunger, thirst, sexual behavior, and the body's reaction to outside temperature. The cerebral cortex is responsible for learning and storing complex and abstract information and considering the future. The cerebrum is divided into lobes, including the occipital lobe, which deals with vision, the parietal lobe, which deals with body sensations, the temporal lobe, which deals with hearing, and the frontal lobe, 
which deals with planning of movements and recent memories. The spinal cord is a long tubular bundle of nerves that's responsible for transporting the brain's messages to the rest of the body, transporting the sensory messages to the brain, and being a sensor for reflexes. The peripheral nervous system just consists of all the other nerves throughout the rest of the body, but the electrical impulse from them travels to the brain at 250 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. Now, is there anyone out there who wants to go fast? Anybody? I want to go fast. Well, we all go that fast, Ricky. All the time. So, basically, after all this, it can be said that biology has no effect on the psyche. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Nah, just kidding. The true question is, what about the stuff science can explain? I apologize for my voice. I'm sort of fighting off a cold right now. But thanks for watching, and don't forget to be awesome.